What if I told you that you could build the perfect flat roof that will work in any climate and that will last decades longer than any other type of roof assembly? In this video, we're talking about protected membrane roof systems, also known as inverted roof assemblies, and why it's considered to be the perfect roof, how to design them, and why you may want to specify one in your low-sloped roof project. Protected membrane roofs have a well-documented history in low-sloped roofing systems and were first studied in the 1970s by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Cold Regions Research and Engineering Lab. They found that locating the roof membrane underneath layers of rigid insulation and a gravel ballast significantly improved the durability of the membrane as it was kept away from the damaging effects of heat and ultraviolet light, two of the most detrimental factors that impact the lifespan of a roof. The location of the membrane in relation to the rigid insulation layers eliminates the need for an additional air and vapor barrier as the roof membrane serves as the water, air, and vapor control layers. Locating the insulation layers completely outboard of the membrane and the decking also prevents any thermal bridging through the roof structure, reducing energy loss, and prevents condensation from forming on the underside of the roof deck. We're going to go through some assembly details, but first let's talk about how a standard flat roof system is designed. Typically, the structural system is framed flat, and then our decking is installed along with an air and vapor barrier, several thick layers of rigid insulation, oftentimes high-density polyiso, tapered rigid insulation to provide the slope to the roof, a cover board to transfer the thermal stresses to the roof deck and to reduce compression on the insulation layers, and finally, the roof membrane. This strategy has been used on many flat roof systems, and for the most part, it works until the roof membrane has aged or deteriorated to the point where it's time to replace it, which can greatly vary vary depending on the type of membrane specified, the thickness of the membrane, and the amount of exposure it has received over its service life. Rather than using tapered insulation to achieve a slope, protected membrane roofs integrate the slope into the structure. This means that if you're working with a wood or light gauge steel framing, you're probably going to be specifying some sort of gutter or scupper system, whereas a concrete roof deck can implement roof drains more easily. Then installed over the roof deck, we want to install either a fully adhered or fluid applied membrane to ensure that we have a monolithic water air and vapor control layer that is bonded to the substrate to prevent water and air leakage. Preferably, we want to specify a membrane with heat welded seams like TPO, PVC, or KEE PVC, as these tend to perform best, but adhered EPDM systems can also work if they're installed properly. It's just that heat welding those seams reduces the risk of water entry at laps, joints, and penetrations. In terms of membrane thickness, we really don't want anything less than 60 mils, as thinner membranes generally have low durability. Thicker 80 and 90 mil membranes have better resistance to punctures, water, tears, impact, heat and thermal cycling, and ultraviolet light, and have significantly longer warranties with some 30-year warranties available. A thicker membrane is truly one of the best investments that you can make in your roof assembly. You don't want to cheap out on this. Then, on top of our roof membrane and below the rigid insulation layers, we want to install a drainage mat to alleviate hydrostatic pressure on the roof membrane. This can be in the form of either a dimple mat or a 3D entangled mesh with filter fabric facers. We don't need a large drainage space, just enough of an air gap to facilitate drainage, which can be as little as an eighth of an inch. We don't want water to be held in tension against the roof membrane and the rigid insulation, since this will be challenging the integrity of the membrane and saturating the rigid insulation, which reduces the effective thermal resistance. For the rigid insulation, thick layers of XPS or extruded polystyrene should be specified. Other insulation types get too wet and saturated and lose their thermal resistance over time. Extruded polystyrene has a tightly closed cell structure and is able to resist moisture saturation significantly better than expanded polystyrene or EPS at greater thicknesses. While some long-term studies show that XPS has a higher moisture retention than EPS, the moisture tends to be limited to the surface of the rigid insulation whereas water absorbed by the EPS foam permeates all the way through to the center of the foam, reducing the R value of the insulation more drastically than EPS, as observed in older studies on protected membrane roof systems. You can check out a study called Wetting of Polystyrene and Urethane Roof Insulations in the Laboratory and on Protected Membrane Roofs. I'll put a link to that in the description. While EPS has been used on some protected membrane roof assemblies with some success, the least risky option here is still XPS. Now, this is really important. We don't want to fasten the insulation to the roof deck since this would violate the integrity of the waterproofing with all those fastener penetrations. 
Instead, we're using either the gravel above as a ballast to hold down the insulation, or we're adhering the insulation to the drainage mat. Next, we want to cover the top layer of insulation with filter fabric or a geotextile, and cover the surface with about two inches of clean, washed gravel or river rock for our ballast. We want to make sure that we're using clean, washed stone to prevent any finer sediment from finding a path into the roof drains or drainage system, and clogging it up. The filter fabric is going to catch most of those loose particles, but we don't want to take any chances. The ballast will weigh down the insulation and keep it away from direct sunlight and heat, since those stones will be absorbing most of the energy and UV light from the sun. Now, at the locations where we want to terminate the gravel ballast, we want to install a flow-through edge restraint or gravel stop, especially around overhangs where we have shallow parapets. We don't want gravel to be falling off of the roof and moving around, especially during storms or strong wind gusts. Now, if you don't want a gravel ballast, or if you wanted to make your rooftop usable or accessible, you could swap it out for a concrete or stone paver system. There are loose laid pedestal systems that interlock together that work exceptionally well for these types of applications. I'll put a link to those in the description. A few more things that you need to be aware of. Be careful if you're planning to specify a fluid applied membrane on a concrete roof deck. There have been a lot of waterproofing failures with urethane based fluid applied membranes in which large blisters form due to osmotic pressures. Essentially the vapor permeance of the fluid applied urethane membranes increases under wet conditions, also known as wet cup permeance, and since conditions on the exterior side of the membrane are almost always wet, vapor drive is directed inwards. Moisture that's driven into the concrete roof deck dissolves salt concentrations contained in the surface of the concrete, and more water accumulates underneath the membrane carrying salts, prematurely aging the membrane, and we get osmotic blistering. Another thing to be aware of, if you decide to use a PVC or PVC based membrane like KEE PVC, it can't be in direct contact or adjacent to polystyrene based products as plasticizer migration can occur as well as dehydrochlorination which basically makes the membrane brittle. So that dimple mat layer really becomes crucial to avoiding material incompatibilities. For more information on flat roof assemblies, make sure to pick up my climate specific guides to flat roof design and the CAD details only available at asiri-designs.com shop. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck on your projects. Cheers.